guys, today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on setting up firewalls. I'm going to show you how to set up your firewall in Ubuntu. This command should also work in Mint. It's the firewall utility I'm going to show you how to use. It's known as UFW. It stands for Uncomplicated Firewall. And it truly is probably the easiest firewall there is out there to configure. Just a few very com basic commands and you go ahead and turn on your firewall. I can show you how to open up a port. Deny a range of IP address or allow a specific IP address to a specific port. All these things are very basic things, security measures that everyone should take on their system just to help prevent any unauthorized access or hacking into your computer. And if you run a server, it's even more important if it's open up into the world, the public domain, or if you're on a wireless. You should be careful for all these things. So just go ahead and keep watching, and I'll show you guys how to set this up on your computer right now. Let's first check the status of our firewall. We could do this on the command line by typing sudo ufw and status. By default, it is inactive. So the first thing we're going to want to do is turn on our firewall by using the enable command. So again, we're doing sudo because we want to do everything as root, ufw, enable. Now if we do the status command again, and now it shows it's active. So let's take a look at where we are vulnerable before we start setting up any rules. By doing a net stat minus a and pipe for more, we can go ahead and see what ports are listening. So you can see our SSH port is listening. That's one of the services we want to access. And looking at this, that's the only service we want to access. So again, we're going to do our sudo ufw command, and we're going to issue allow port 22. Port 22 is a default port for SSH. So we want us to be able to SSH into our machine. Now we go ahead and check the status again. It's going to show us that we allow from anywhere to port 22 on IP version 4 and IP version 6. Now let's say if we want to deny that rule, we can go ahead and say deny, and then we check the status again. Now let's say we also run a web server. So we're going to allow HTTP or HTTPS. We can name the service we want to run. The way you know this is by checking your ETC service file. The services are listed by name there and associated port. So now we're going to want port 80 and 443 accordingly. So let's say we only want a very specific IP address or IP range to be able to access SSH on our machine. So we go ahead and say here allow a specific protocol TCP from an IP address to port 22. So we could go ahead and add the subnet mask 24 to add the rule. Now if you take a look at our rules here you can now see that the very specific IP and IP range have been added. So if this is a server, for example, and you don't want anything um, accessing it, only port 22 for a command line access, then your rule set should look something similar to this. This is saying a very specific IP address or an IP range is able to SSH in. The same thing you can do with port 80 or 443 for web services or 53 for bind. Let's say you want to go ahead and disable your firewall command. Go ahead and do the sudo ufw disable command. And the only reason you would be doing this if you feel a certain service is being tampered by the firewall and you want to troubleshoot. If you want to be able to do this using a graphical user interface, we go ahead and do that by installing the graphical user interface by using the app get command install gufw. To bring up the graphical user interface now, you just click on the dash home, search for GUFW, click on the icon that appeared, and it's going to bring up our graphical user interface to enable our firewall. You will be prompted for the root password because this is a system-wide setting, so you will be affecting other users if other users are on the system, so you do need administrative access here. The first thing you want to do is turn on our firewall. You can click this by clicking on the on status on the very top of our GUI. Now let's create a rule. Let's move our cursor upwards, click on edit, and click on add rule. A wizard will open up that will help us guide us through our rule creation. So if you look at the first tab, pre-configured, this is probably the simplest tab to select. Allow, deny, reject, limit. Allow is self-explanatory. Deny is limit six attempts and it's locked out. And reject is recording the denial. Now you could say in and out. By default, it's usually in you want to block, but there are reasons you would want to block outward. Now you could select application to allow in access or a service. And there's a pre a list of commonly used services. So if you want to select SSH, for example, you go ahead and select that. 
So we could say allow in service SSH from any port. This is where you could select that broad range rule. So once you do that, you click on add and that will be added into our rule set. Now let's say it's an unknown port. So you can click on the simple tab and you have the same allow deny reject limit in out TCP UDP but now you can specify a port so let's say you want to move uh, SSH to a random port let's say 2256 for whatever reason you would specify that port here in the previous tab you specify a service name and the service is defined by your ETC service file but here you can specify the port manually you get a little bit more control doing it this way if for whatever reason you move the port. So if you want to say SSH, you can just type in 22 here. Now the advanced tab is where you could deny or allow a very specific IP address. So you could say IP address here and then a port. Let's say you just want to allow this very specific IP address to SSH in. Go ahead and select the from and the port. And this is probably the easiest thing you could do to allow uh, SSH in from a specific IP. If you want to get very specific, you'd say port to port. So now we create a few rule sets here. You can see allowing, denying is also up there in the incoming. By default, you say deny. It denies all except for what the rule allows. Now you notice the outgoing you can list as deny. You want to be very careful when you do this. But the reason you want to do this is for additional security because you don't always need uh, packets going out. If, for example, you've been compromised, then one thing they could do is send out traffic on a different port backed to their own system or server to retrieve information. Putting deny here will kind of slow that down. There are ways around it, of course, you're being hacked, but this can help. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I do plan on doing another tutorial on IP tables soon. IP tables is a more widely used uh, firewall utility that you find in pretty much all Linux distributions now. So just keep watching for that. Hopefully next week or the week after, I should put out a tutorial for that. So just subscribe if you haven't, and so you get updates. Otherwise, I will see you guys later.